So today is October the 24th. Tomorrow we do have a 100 point test. Um, it's only on the multiply and dividing, which is what we've been working on this week and last week. This review is honestly just kind of like the test. Um, I will say I'm going to start with going to the bottom to the vocab. Tomorrow you will have a word bank. Tomorrow you will have a word bank. Um, I think we just don't really have room on these and we try to save some copies. So there is also another issue. If you will just start by looking at number 18, cross out this 11 and 6 eighths. Just get rid of 11 and 6 eighths. And make it 1 eighth. And we'll do that one in a minute. Okay. If you'll change that, it's going to make sense in a minute. If you don't change it, it's not going to make sense. Right here. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to start with just the vocab. And like I said, tomorrow you will have a word bank. Okay, a blank is made up of a whole number and a fraction. Uh, mixed number. Mixed number. Number 17, an expression that's written with a numerator over a denominator. With a bar, line, fraction. fraction, easy breezy. Mm -hmm. oh, what is the next one? Reciprocal. The reason this is reciprocal, if you'll look, if you take an 8 or any whole number and you turn it into a fraction, it is really 8 over 1. So the blank of 8 once is 1 eighth. So the reciprocal is. Um, this is really the only, what I'm going to call, new word for the last couple weeks, or last two weeks for sure. Um, and we only use reciprocals in division. Okay. When dividing fractions or multiplying fractions, it is the most helpful to change a mixed number into a or an improper fraction. Okay. In four-fifths, four is the numerator. Numerator. I'm going to add something just so no one can say I didn't ask this. Five is the denominator, just in case someone needs that word. Why not? Throw it in there. Because 21, the blank of the fraction is the top number. Which one? Numerator. numerator. We accidentally put numerator twice and didn't put denominator. So all it was was I was trying to make sure we had both of them. Okay, so there's the vocab. Like I said, word bank tomorrow. Okay, what I want to do next is go up to number 10. Working with the word problems and trying to correct any issues we might have. Okay, there are two things I'm going to say, and I'm going to say it under the camera so y'all can see it. Okay, when thinking about this, you know they're either multiply or divide this week. Okay, um, anything that you're chopping up, so you got like a long pole or something, if you're chopping it up, cutting it up, breaking it up, what kind of math is that? Division. Now, I always I want you to think about this. However long that pole is, the big long pole is divided into fraction chunks. Okay? Because the thing is, some of you are getting the wrong answer just because you're setting it up backwards. 
And then when you keep change flipping, you're getting the wrong thing. Okay. Here is another word of advice. Okay. If they're asking you, okay, something like a fraction of something. So I want you to think about it. What is like half of a pizza? Okay. So, like, if it's cut in eight slices, right, it'd be four. So the fraction, all I'm getting at is when we're doing this of is multiply thing. Remember, fraction comes first, what I call of a whole thing, of a whatever, like a whole bunch of somethings. Okay. And this is just hints, like for your brain to kind of get, try to get memorized, the word problems end up correct. Or correctly written. Okay. So, let's look. Okay. We have got, um, so like number 10 here. Okay. I'm trying to get it all together here. So the camera, we can see it all, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So number 10 says, three friends have 585 pieces of candy. John has three ninths of the candy. Sally has two ninths of the candy. And Smarty has four ninths of the candy. How many pieces of candy does Sally have? Who is the only person they're asking about? Sally. Sally, do the other people really matter? No. no, not on this one, okay? And Sally, it says right there, she has two nights of the candy. So, if she has two nights of the candy, how much candy do they have? 585. 585, flushy, flushy. So, you're setting it up the way it's kind of worded, okay? One trick is, guys, if you get like 15,000 as an answer, do they even have 15,000 pieces of candy? <coughs> no. So if your answer doesn't make sense, go back and see if you did the right math, okay? So when we get done with this, we're going to ask ourselves if it makes sense. Okay, so two nights, we know of means multiply. 585, yeah, 85, over one. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. Yes, the 9 and the 585 simplify. 9 goes into 9 once. 9 into 585 is 6, 54, 45, 65. Okay. So, now I can multiply straight across. Hundred and thirty. So hundred and thirty pieces of candy. So once you think about it, like if she only has a hundred like if she has a hundred and thirty pieces, does that sound like a okay amount if they if the total was five eighty five? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this was weird. I had to, earlier today, I knew that 9, of course, divided by 9. So I just checked that. So what I did was, it's a great question, I took 585 and I just divided by 9 to see if it would work. Okay. Um, and I guess you'd say, I, I since I did it earlier, I kind of skipped this step. But what I did is I did this math to realize that it went 65 times. And then, it like, so I took this. I did 9 divided by 9 is 1. And 585 divided by 9 is 65. So I'm simplifying by 9s on the top and the bottom. Okay? If that doesn't work for you, you can always just go straight across and do 2 times 585. You're going to get like a 1,000 and something and divide by 9. You'll still get the same answer. Okay?
Okay. Yes. Yes. And we just assume we need to use them all, don't we? Yeah. yeah. We don't always need them all, guys. A lot of times these questions, um, especially on state tests, they'll, they'll put extra information you don't need. So that was one of them. That's the first one we really see. Okay. Number 11. In the million dollar marching band. Okay. In the million dollar marching band. Two fifths of the students play drums. If there are 560 students in the band, how many students play drums? Now, slow down and think. What are they asking us for? How, yeah, like they're asking us how many kids play drums. And if you look up here, just check. Does this two fifths play drums or not play drums? Play drums. Play drums. So they want, I mean, they kind of laid that one out for us, meaning they want two-fifths of the total, 560. Okay. And we know if of means multiply, should we be getting a smaller than 560 or bigger? Bigger. So... We want a smaller number, right? Because can we have more than 560 people play drums? No, that'd be the whole band plus some playing drums. Right, right. So right here, I see that this ends in a 5. This ends in a 5 and a 0. So they're divisible by 5. Right, okay. So 5 into 5, 1. Now... 5 into 560. 120. 120. 112. 112. Slow down. Okay. Now, multiplying straight across. 24. That many kids is what they're saying play drums. Now I will say, in a band, that's not normal. Okay, um, there might be 20 or 30, but usually not 200. Um, but if you think about it, they're asking almost half. If you think about two fifths, it's really almost half. So if you think about your answer, almost half of 560 is around 225-ish, like, your answer makes sense. Just slow down tomorrow and ask yourself, like, if you get an answer like 15,000, ask yourself, can we have 15,000 drummers if the band only has 560 people? No. No. Okay? Slow down, because all it is is y'all are doing the wrong math or setting it up wrong, and it's like if you would slow down and just ask yourself, does it even make sense, you might be able to fix it up. And make it make sense. Okay? Yes? Yes. So right here, I simplified by 5. And then I'm just literally doing 1 times 1 is 1. But yes, then right here, I'm doing 224 divided by 1, which is 224. Yes. Anything over 1 ends up just being that number on top. Good question. Good. Okay. Now, I like the next one because it is odd. Um, number 12. Suppose a hurricane traveled 130 miles from a point in the Atlantic Ocean to the Florida coastline in six and a half hours. So if you think about it being way out at sea and it's coming in. It's 130 miles, and it takes it six and a half hours. How many miles per hour did the hurricane travel? Now, thinking about this, you've got this big distance. 
130 miles. They're asking you to break it down to how many miles per hour, per one hour. But right now it's at six and a half hours. We're trying to break down that six and a half to one. So what kind of math breaks it down? Division. Division. Okay, but what is the big number that we're breaking up? Right. So the 130 has got to go first because it's 130 miles, and we're dividing it by six and a half. Ah, so we got to think of all our steps. Okay, changed it to improper. Yes, this is a division. So we got to keep the first fraction. Change to multiply. And flip over. We always flip division. Okay. Now, I will say it doesn't really look pretty, but if you're seeing it, 13 and 130 simplify by? 13s to make 10. Yes, okay. 13 divided by 13 is 1. 13 into this would be 10. I knew why you said 10. It's okay. 10 times 2? 20. 20. 1 times 1? One. 1. So it's 20. And I want you to think about it. 20 what? 20 hours. Miles. Miles per hour. In one hour. Yes, per hour. Miles per hour. Listen. Think about this. In our cars, we do something called miles per hour. We're traveling down the road doing 45 miles an hour. That means if we had the same exact push on that pedal of that gas pedal, we never hit a bump. We never stopped at a red line. We just kept going 20 miles per hour. That's how far you would travel in one hour. So in six and a half hours, you travel 130. We use this math all the time. You just don't realize it because it's kind of being done for you on the on the dashboard of the car. It's weird. We used to do a lot of this ourselves. Come at it. This is 17 multiplied. Of means multiply. Just be careful because there might be of in this one, but it was divide. There wasn't no. Yes. I know. I don't know whose it is. Just shut it off if it's yours. Yes. Please just power it off, guys. Do it. Sorry. Right here? Or back here? Oh, okay. The only thing that would go into the one and the two would be one, which would give you one and two again. That, yes, yes. And, well, let me say this. What if it was 7 and 7? Well, or 7 and 7 are both divisible by 7s, right, to make 1. So if they're the same number, you can simplify them to 1. Right. Here's what I, I found interesting. I think some of you... When, when we've gone over stuff this week, I have just seen small mistakes on the simplify, which is what he's asking about. Mm -hmm. So let me show you some. Because I have, I know one kid in here who does every problem twice usually on a test. Let me show you some. What if you took this problem, you make sure that you got it all set up right, you go ahead, you keep change flip. But what if right here, at the multiply step. What if I took it and I worked it the other way? So what if I took the same exact numbers? Okay, so I took, what is that, 130, 1 times 2 thirteenths. What if I did no simplifying? So I just multiplied straight across, 13 on bottom, 2 times 130 would be 260, okay? 
Now, I realize the numbers aren't as pretty, but I can still do this. 260 divided by 13. Oh, 260, sorry. Um, did I still get 20? Yes. yes. That means that my simplifying was correct because it's kind of like double checking your work without, like, with, I guess you'd say, without doing it a different way. Like, you're still doing the same thing, you're just not simplifying. So if you're not sure if your simplifying is going great and you have spare time, go back and work it without the simplifying. Can't hurt anything, that's for sure. Okay. Let's look at 13. Okay. How many one-fourth foot lengths of pipe can be cut from a seven and a half foot pipe? Okay. Ah, we, what are we doing with this pipe? Adding to it? Uh, no, no. No, we're doing what? Dividing. Chunking it up. Yeah, we're dividing. What? How long is the pipe for the big piece? Oh, seven and one half. Like, it's seven. long. Seven and a half. If you take numbers like this, we know people can be six feet tall. We know they can be seven feet tall. <coughs> seven and a half is a long, it's, a, it's a, a large amount. Seven and a half. We're dividing it into one-fourth chunks. Then it's going to tell us how many chunks we're going to get. 15 over 2. One force. Keep. Change. Flip. Okay. Now I personally like the cross simplifying. 2 into 2 once. 2 into 4 twice, 30 over 1, so it's 30. 30 what? 30, 30, 30 pieces of pipe. Yeah, 30 pieces of pipe. And if you want to go crazy, you could say that are 1 fourth foot long. But that's all it is. It's how many chunks you get. You now have a pile of 30 sitting there. Okay. Okay. 14 and 15. I like it. Easy, but some of the most missed questions. 14. Reciprocal of 7 twelfths. 12 sevenths. Yeah. All we do with reciprocal is flip it over to 12 sevenths. Okay. Reciprocal we use in division. We flip it over. Here is the trick, though. If it's 3 and 7 elevenths, we first have to change it improper, then flip it over. Okay? The only right answer is 11 fortieths. Okay? Uh-huh. Which one? 13. Oh, that one. Sorry. 13. Yes. There it is. Okay. If y'all will start with number one, and I'm going to start working them in a second. That way you can check your work. Uh-huh. You need what? Eight. I haven't done eight. Okay. Josh. Number 15? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you asking number 15? Uh, okay, so what I did is I did the backward C. So I did 11 times 3 is 33 plus 7 to get that 40. And then once I set it up, I flip it over.
get on that one? Okay, what I'm going to do is start working number one now. One through nine, just what I'm going to call basic, multiply, divide, and making sure you simplify your answers. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to start working. I want to see how this goes. Okay. Hmm. So start now, just in case you've forgotten. You're going to multiply 4 times 3 is 12, like you multiply, and add in the 3. Okay, so yes. 15 over 4. Okay, you're scaring me. Okay, times 5, 6. Now, I'm in that magic box where I can cross simplify. Remember, with multiply, we don't flip anything. You can. Yeah, you already gave Can't do two bottoms. What number goes into 6 and 15? Three. Listen, it's got to be a multiplication table that they have in common. I'm dividing by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is 5. No, listen. It doesn't matter as long as you got 3 and 1 eighth. 75 24 is still 3 and 3 twelfths or something, but it's still 3 and 1 eighth. So if you went straight across and you got 75 24 it still turns into 3 and an eighth. Yes. Ah, 3 and 3, 24. So that's what it is. Divide by 3. 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 24, 8. Thank you. You're welcome. I had to get my numbers right. Okay, stop, stop. So if you did the big numbers, yes, you got 75 over 24. You're right. You end up with that, which ends up with that. I'm just doing the backwards check mark division. <coughs> okay. Number two. Three sevenths times twenty one. Okay. Ugh. I don't like the way it's written, so I'm gonna go to a new piece of paper. It's bothering me. Okay, but listen, do we flip anything? No. no. Listen, three, just keep three sevenths times 21, and it is over one. Does seven go into 21? Yes. So seven into seven once, seven into 21, three. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to cross simplify as long as you simplify your answers. Number three, two divided by three and two thirds. Okay, so uh, two over one divided by nine, ten, eleven thirds. 
Since it's division, keep two once, change to multiply, and flip it over to three elevenths. Okay, this is where we could cross simplify. Does anything simplify? Nope. So this one is just a six elevenths. And it doesn't simplify. So some are that easy. It's just some take different steps. Yes. Not always. Not always. It matters what you're simplifying by. So what you're doing, like, when you see a 7 and a 21, you're thinking what goes into both those numbers, which is 7, right? Okay, so what you're asking yourself is, like, right, when you look at this number, you should be thinking 7 divided by 7 equals 1. Up here, you're thinking 21 divided by 7 equals 3. Okay? If you don't like the cross simplifying, you can just do big numbers and then simplify down here. It's up to you. You could do it both ways and check it and make sure it's right. Okay. Okay, let's try number four. Okay, it is 10 divided by 101 fourth. Okay, so 10 over 1. Five fourths division. Keep ten once. Change to multiply. Flip it over to four fifths. Okay, guys. Tomorrow, if you want to use highlighters and stuff, I don't care. This is where that magic box is. Five. Whoops. Five and ten. That's right. 5 and 10 divide by 5's, right? Like 5 goes into both of them. So, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Okay. Now, nothing else simplifies. 2 times 4 is 8 over 1 ends up being eight. Okay. I'm going to be honest. When it comes to simplifying, it's all multiplication tables. And the more you know, the kind of more fluent you are with them, it just makes the simplifying stuff easier. Um, it's and that's just part of it, guys. Um, if you know you're rusty on a certain number, like if you know you don't know sevens and eights, keep studying them because it's going to make your math easier. Okay. Okay. Four times four is 16 plus three. 19 over four. Okay. Divided by seven over eight. Keep 19 fours, change, flip, and my question is first, does anything simplify? Yes. Yeah, the eight and the four, let's make our lives a little easier at least. I mean, I even see the 19 and I start to kind of cringe and think, Ugh. but listen, if we can at least change these. 4 divided by 4 is 4 divided by 4 is 8 divided by 4 is 2. There we go. So, at least now, I'm only working with 2 times 19, which is 38, which luckily I know 7 times what? 5 is 35. Three left over out of seven. sevens. Doing that backwards check mark. Okay, I don't know if y'all could see it. Okay. 
The way you study for this, some of you have already put up your papers and you don't even know if you got the right answers. The way you study for this is you take one that you either thought was hard or that you missed, write it down, just the problem, work it out, and then compare your answer to the right answer. That's how we study. If you can't figure it out, go back to the video and see if you can figure it out. Um, okay, 16 times 1 is 16, plus 15, 31 sixteenths divided by 7 eighths. Yeah, what I'm doing is keep change, flip, keep change, flip to 8 sevenths. Ooh, right there I see some relief, that 8 and that 16. 8 into 8 once, 8 into 16, 2. Twenty, because 2 would be 28. 3 is left over. 14. You got it. to do anything to this thing? No. no, I'm already actually at, like, you're already there. So can you cross simplify? Yeah. Oh, yes, 3 and 15. Yeah. 3 and 15. 40. Right, I really was, I was kind of looking for some more, but yeah. like it's easier than, now, I giggled about number eight because so many kids earlier cringed and they were like, why did you give us 3,025? But here's my thing. When I'm looking at this, okay, I realize it's 3,025. I realize when you rewrite it, you got to do this. But we are assuming you see that this 5 and that 5 make it both divisible by 5. Okay, meaning it simplifies. And 5's is not bad. Uh, Jonah, how many 5's are in that? Do you know? I mean, Josiah, I'm losing it. 605, yes. 5 into that is 605. 5 into 5 is 1. You may have to doodle something on the edge of your paper, but it's still not that bad. Now, don't forget, a lot of y'all are telling me it's 605, but you got to do 4 times 605. Yes, 2,420. I'm just taking it slow. I love being on video because I'm always waiting to make mistakes. Okay. Got one more. Number nine. It's okay. Can you do it right here? Number nine. It is three and three eighths divided by two and one fourth. Seven eighths. I'll see it. I'm trying to show you. Okay. Divided by nine fourths. Keep. Change. Flip. Ooh, I like this one. Four and eight. Nine and twenty-seven. Yeah. So, 3 over 2, which equals 1 and 1 half. As long as you get 1 and 1 half. You might have gigantic numbers, but you can, you'll still get there. Hang on, can I 
Eight or nine? Eight. Eight. Yes, that's the, well, that is a huge mistake. It's forgetting to multiply times the four. Which one? Nine. Nine into twenty-seven, three. Nine into nine, one. That three? Three times one is three. Okay. There's a lot to see in that one. Tomorrow, just take it slow. Y'all can do good. Great. Well, whatever the word is.